My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people, my friends, just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Stop giving up on companies you believe in. You'll be wrong more often than you're right, and you'll end up kicking yourself on days like today, where the Dow surged 614 points, as it be shot up 2.47%. NASDAQ skyrocketed 3.06%. This morning, Jeff Marks, my partner in the CBC Investing Club, and I were puzzled. Puzzled over about how some of the some of our stocks in the trust were performing so poorly. It was crushing us. And then I was reminded of when I worked with Karen Kramer at my old hedge fund. I'd see one of our stocks down big. I'd say, I, I simply can't believe it. The stock's getting crushed. And, and she would ask me, did you do your homework? And I would say, yes. She said, do you have conviction? I said, absolutely. She then picked up the phone, get a look at the stock, meaning how much was offered, and buy, sometimes buy, a ton of it. Right then and there. She did it because she said that the sellers weren't as smart as we were, which meant that we were doing something uh, stupid if we decide not to buy the stock. Too often, stocks go down because people who haven't done the homework are knocking them down for reasons that make no sense. Just because a stock is down, that doesn't mean the decline is justified. Markets are constantly making mistakes. That's the whole reason why it's possible to make good money in this business. One common mistake, people don't realize there are some big-time execs that you cannot afford to bet against. Case in point, Alphabet. Yeah, the old Google. The CEO, the CEO Sundar Pinchai. Very good, very good. But the CFO, Ruth Porat who runs the conference call, extraordinary. The other night, Alphabet reported and the headline writers put out some stupid drivel about how the company had an astounding shortfall. The stock dropped 200 points at one point. I, I, I was blown away. I said, come on, man, it's Alphabet. Ah, it's Alphabet. Oh, no. Can't touch Alphabet. And then you listen to Ruth Porat in the call. And what does she say? What does this brilliant CFO say? She told you it was a great quarter for search and for cloud and for YouTube, except in Eastern Europe because of the war. While the headline numbers fell short of expectations, the underlying trends were all amazing. I was watching the stock come down while I was filming the show, so I desperately wanted to listen to the conference call in case Ruth actually said maybe something horrifying, maybe something's gotten worse, maybe there's something bad. But when I read the transcript when I got home, I was furious. This was Ruth Porat saying things were good, not some glad-handing jamoke. Ruth Darn Porat, one of the smartest people I have ever met, a renowned investment banker, former CFO of Morgan Stanley, and a person has got horse sense. When you go up against Ruth Porat, you're bringing a penknife to a javelin missile. One time, she and her fabulous husband, Anthony, showed up at Bar San Miguel. I had breezed in to grab a quick mask. I'll say hi to the gang. Then I saw them, and I was shaking. What, what were they doing here? What was I going to say? What was I going to say to Ruth Porat? I mean, should I just leave? Maybe she didn't see me. Maybe I can just go. I mean, she's in my place. I mean, this is like in my brain. This is what I was thinking. Why? Because I wasn't prepped to see Ruth at my bar. I'm not that rigorous. To this day, I'm upset that I didn't bring my A-game to speak to her. When I got home that night and talked to my wife, Lisa, I obsessed about how Ruth must think I'm a joker, an idiot, a fool. That's Ruth Porat, Titan. If she says the quarter's great and she explains it, you don't just dismiss it. You, the stock's wrong, not her. You dismiss the clown selling the stock. They're wrong, not you. And certainly not Ruth Porat. Sure enough, Alphabet's now within three bucks of where it was trading before it reported that so-called horrendous quarter where you had to sell because it was miserable and the world was coming to an end. The idiots... Who sold it, especially the ones who sold it down 200, they wouldn't know Ruth Porat from a hole in the wall. Me, I admit to still being intimidated by her. But that doesn't mean I can't make money listening to her. 
Then there's this guy, Mark Zuckerberg. All right. Now, here's a guy who invented Facebook for the desktop and then everything moved to mobile. He said he'd make the move to mobile. Lots of people didn't believe him, sold the stock down to 18. Uh, we did believe him, though, and we bought the stock for the charitable trust, one of the greatest buys they've ever made. Sure enough, Zuckerberg figured it out. Then Facebook started losing a snap or something we didn't even remember. Next thing you know, he comes up with stories and crushes the competition. Uh, so this time he's supposed to be beaten by the geniuses at TikTok, right? Wow, are they smart. He's a dope, right? Well, that's a total insult to Zuckerberg and company. He's, he, 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 he's created this whole area. He was supposed to be beaten by Apple's new privacy rules that make it harder to be targeted, advertising, give targeted advertising. Everybody was counting him out again, like he'd never done anything right. Do, you, do people think he's lost his acumen? Do they think he had a brain transplant with Navin Johnson, one of Steve Martin's all-time greatest roles, so they simply couldn't make that movie now? The cans! He shouldn't have cared! Well, right. What's Zuckerberg done? He's gotten around the Apple privacy issue by embracing artificial intelligence in the absence of third-party data. They're using computers to model your behavior, figure out what will work. I like that. As for TikTok, I've been saying Facebook's Reels would offer a better deal for small, medium-sized businesses, but not till the end of the year. Turns out I was way too pessimistic. It's now. Reels is already there. As a small business person, I can tell you I like it much more already, and I would not have said that six months ago. Facebook put aside billions to defeat TikTok. Zuckerberg only spent a fraction of that, and he's already created something better. Way to get to the end of the year. It's going to be like TikTok. Like, what was that? What was the TikTok? I don't remember. This is the guy the Bears want to bet against. You can't be serious. How Tim Farley, CEO of Ford. Last year, he told us that he was done losing money in South Africa and Europe. I laughed. That's what Ford does, lose money. No, he, he, they didn't. He got rid of the losses in Europe and South America. This is the year he said he'd take on Elon Musk and beat him when it comes to electric pickup trucks. In fact, he promised a huge electrified lineup, including hundreds of thousands of electric F-150s. I had the privilege of sitting in the front of one today, and all I can say is that Ford is now one of the... The, the Ford stock is one of the cheapest in the SP 500. I'd be a buyer. And if you're a seller, well, stupid is a stupid does. Hey, did Saudi Nadella miss when Microsoft reported two days ago? Well, the headline said he did. Did you see that? You see the headline said this was a miss? I know I always say wait and listen to what the company has to say on the conference call before you pull the trigger. Unless, of course, it's someone as great as Sadia who knows how to run an enterprise with the right products and still execution. Buying Microsoft into that foolish dip that was based on a moronic headline by someone who's probably machine so can't even be fired was like stealing candy from him. Well, I don't know. Uh, an adult. Anyway, finally, a lot of people traded around the stock of Apple, as usual, because we heard bad things about supply problems in China and drab phones and slow services. That's people betting against Tim Cook. You know, Tim Cook, you know what they're doing right now? They're betting right now. As I stand here, as I stand here and talk, they're betting against Tim Cook. They're selling it down. They think they're so smart. They're like, oh, I'm so smart. Buyers are so dumb. I'm so smart. Tim Cook, what does he know? I mean, where's he from? He found fell off a turnip truck. Good, good, fine. Do it. I'm asterisking the worry about the Chinese lockdowns. I know they weren't in this quarter. I know they'll be next quarter. But you know what? It's Tim Cook, for heaven's sake. All right, maybe you get a better chance to buy because the moron chowderhead Mount Bank knaves are dumping it furiously and thinking they're real smart because they sold it at 160 and now it's at 157. Genius! Well, I'll tell you. If you follow the CBC Investment Club tomorrow, you might sign, find that we found out, we found that Tim Cook that he was still as smart as he was like 48 hours ago, or, or even 37 hours. Now, I'm not advocating the great many th man theory, okay, of business history. The world's complicated. People are fallible. Uh, no executives deserve your blind faith. But, but just like in the NBA, NFL, you know, there are superstars, right? I mean, there's people who do unworldly things. I mean, they're unreal. They do these crazy things. They're, uh, they're just better. Now, we don't have highlight reels of the work of Tim Cook or Nadella. We can't find ESPN doing these incredible stories about Farley. And you're not, never going to see Ruth Poor out in the WNBA. She's not there. If we did, though, you'd understand that you bet against these superstar CEOs and CFOs at your own pearl. The bottom line, superstars don't win every game. But over the long haul, they win a lot more often than they lose. And counting them out, Rarely a smart decision. Hey, how about we go to Paul in the show me state of Missouri? Paul! What is happening, Jimmy Chill? I don't know. I had a couple of those energy drinks today. I don't think they're good for you. <laughs> I, no you more know, Jimmy Chill today. Yeah. What's uh, going on? Calling about, yeah, calling about the Avis Budget Group. See what you think. I've held it since March of 2020. 
and have a pretty low Well, you know what you're going to do tomorrow? You're going to sell, sell, sell it, sell. and you're going to buy the stock of Hertz. Why? Because that buy, buy, buy. guy who runs Hertz is smart, and he's a moneymaker. He was the CFO of Goldman Sachs. See, you sure? Hey, oh, he's another guy that, like, when he calls it, it says Sierra Steve. It's like, mm-hmm, but I'll take it. All right, stop giving up on companies you believe in. Superstars don't win every game. But over the long haul, I would rather put them in my lineup than trade the, trade down and hope for some sort of player that may pay off from Ohio State tonight. Oh, man, minute. is your portfolio hurting with Hertz? <laughs> the company posted an, that, no, not the quarterback of the Eagles. Stop it. Uh, he's posted an earnings beat, but the stock is still declining. I'll find out if it's worth uh, parking your portfolio and shares with the company when I sit down with the CEO. Then I'm getting meta with meta and telling you if today's rally could be a sign of things to come. And thinking of setting sail with Brunswick as we head into the summer months? The stockholders setting sail away from it. Let's find out what's going on. We have an exclusive with the CEO after earnings. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. <laughs> 